This video is about breakthrough curves in chromatography columns and require basic knowledge on what the breakthrough curve means for a chromatography column, what the breakpoint to be is, and what T-star tells you about the adsorption capacity of the column. I will in this video explain two things related to batchwise adsorption in column. Firstly, why T-star is scalable with column length during upscaling, while TB, the breakpoint, is not. And secondly, why a favorable isotherm is required to achieve constant pattern. In batchwise column adsorption, we start with a column filled with water or some other liquid does, that does not adsorb to the adsorbent. The water is blue in this animation, and the red is the substance being adsorbed. The darker the red, the higher the concentration in the water. In this second animation, I have instead illustrated the front as a concentration curve that moves along the column. The two animations are two ways to illustrate exactly the same thing. The breakthrough curve is a graph showing the concentration in the outlet as a function of time. In the two upper animations, I have drawn two vertical lines that move along the column. The first, the frontmost vertical line at a low concentration, and the second where we have a higher concentration. When the first vertical line reaches the outlet, that's when we have our breakpoint, and the second vertical line reaches the outlet at the time we call T star. We see in the animation that the front initially stretches out, it broadens. Thus the vertical line that corresponds to our breakpoint concentrations moves faster than the line corresponding to T star. This is due to diffusion and some other processes. We will look at this a bit carefully. Uh, let's look at the front at a given moment in time. We see that the concentration of the blue substance, that is the water, is high to the left, and that the concentration of the red substance is high to the right. Since diffusion happens from high concentration to low concentration, the blue substance diffuses to the right and the red diffuses to the left. This broadens the front, so that's what's happening, making it more and more diffuse. Some red molecules thus move faster to the left than what the red molecules move on average. Let us look a little bit closer at three different points in time. After, after a short time, uh, 40 time units here, the diffusion has not had time to spread out the red substance. If we compare with the situation after another 80 time units and after yet another 80, we see that the line corresponding to T star move at the same velocity all the time. Uh, but the line that corresponds to TB moved faster initially and then slowed down to the same velocity as the line corresponding to T star. From this we draw the conclusion that T star is scalable with column length, while TB is not. So when the front has moved a bit into the column, the, the gradient stops broadening and continues to move at a constant velocity through the column, at least in these illustrations. We call this phenomena constant pattern. But why doesn't the front continue to broaden and become more and more diffuse? The answer is due to favorable adsorption isotherm. So the molecules of the red substance that has traveled the farthest into the column are surrounded by adsorbent that has nothing or close to nothing adsorbed to its surface. So these molecules thus tend to adsorb. Once absorbed, they can't follow the convective flow through the column and thus stops moving. Further back in the front, the concentration is higher and the red substance is surrounded by adsorbent that has already molecules adsorbed to it. Thus, in this part of the front, it doesn't slow down as much as through adsorption as the low concentration part of the front. If the adsorption isotherm is favorable, the fraction adsorbed at low concentration is disproportionately high compared to the concentration. This eventually slows down the low concentration part of the front so much that it totally counteracts the broadening of the front. This phenomena is called self-sharpening and is the reason why we get constant pattern. With a non-favorable adsorption isotherm, however, the broadening will continue and will, uh, will not get a constant pattern. The trick for upscaling from small to large columns we will use in this course require that we 
perhaps obviously have the same matrix. So the same adsorbent, the same packing density in both columns. But we also need to have the same linear velocity. So the velocity measured in meter per second in the large column as in the small that we have constant pattern. To get constant pattern, we need a favorable adsorption isotherm uh, that is uh, that unproportionately much adsorbs at low concentration. And we need a column that is long enough of constant pattern to have time to develop. Because if, if the small column is too short uh, for constant pattern to develop, the breakthrough curve uh, in the small column will be steeper than the breakthrough curve in the larger, longer column. But if the small column is long enough for constant pattern to develop, the breakthrough curves for the two columns will look the same. The length of the unused bed, LUB, will be the same. And the time difference between T star and TB will also be the same for both columns.